Beach. We are doing a series and David will be taking us through some guided meditation as well as breathing, especially during this time. Um, if you haven't seen our videos before, you can watch them on YouTube, looking at Pyramid Yoga on the YouTube as well as his website and we'll be putting up many throughout the week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, always at 7 a.m. Uh, Thailand time. Thank you guys. Ta -da. <laughs> okay, let's begin with the same thing that we started our life with, the breath. And that is what's being challenged or confronted in the world out there today. A virus that takes our breath away. So we take our breath in yoga, that's an important part of the whole process. Pranayama yoga. Take a few deep breaths and just see how you feel today. How does it feel to take these deep breaths? As deep as you can, whichever way works for you. Your concentration comes into feeling exactly what's happening in your body. You have movement in the abdomen and the mid and the upper chest to expand and contract the lungs. This is how we breathe. You can also feel the air flowing in and out. So we pay attention to this. Don't think about anything. Just notice the sensations and the feelings. Now we'll just bring this into the three different parts of the breath as they are known and practiced in yoga. We have the Sanskrit names for them. There's Adhyam, Madhyam, Pranayama. So we'll go to the abdominal breath. Your, place your hand on your belly. I'll just go sideways so maybe you can see more of the motion here. The diaphragm, which does this part of the breathing, goes down, pushes the, di the abdominal region down. All the digestive organs are below here, and they have to move out of the way for the diaphragm to go down. So this is how we know this is functioning. Your belly bulges out. On the exhalation, you're pulling and contracting the abdominal muscles at the same time, helping to squeeze the air out. In the system of chakra yoga that I teach, this brings the prana, the empowerment, into the first two chakras, muladhara and swadhisthana, empowering the physical body, the fluid-like nature of the body, creating more circulation. You can feel that it is really moving things down here. By moving things, you're increasing the circulation of everything, lymphatic fluids and blood in the area, getting more oxygen everywhere. So stabilizing your down-to-earth health, right, to the physical cells in your body. Take a few more breaths and notice exactly how this feels for you. So attention, you're paying attention and noticing any sensations, which is how your body is feeding back to your mind, letting you know what's going on down here. That's part one of the breathing. Again, this is a fundamental, a very important part often neglected in some of the yoga classes that are out there, too focused on the physical. The physical, without the connection to the breath, all the movement and holding the poses, 
doesn't have one quarter of the benefits. Once you add the breath, circulation with the movement, you have oxygen going to all the cells everywhere, discharge of carbon dioxide which builds up all through the day and the night when we're sleeping. So we get rid of one and we replace that with oxygen. Now let's come to the second part. This one is more important in these times. We're dealing now with the third and fourth chakras and the fourth chakra is the one that triggers autoimmune response to any kind of virus or bacteria that is present. If it's a new one, the autoimmune response will figure out the new virus and create an antibody to take care of it. And the mental side of yoga the mind-body connection. We need to understand this. We need to believe in this process and not think that a virus is going to knock us out and maybe even kill us. That's kind of a silly idea, really, but only because we don't know about how the body is capable. We have these fears building up. So we need to get rid of the fears. And the breathing in this way will actually dispel some of the fear. It changes the feeling. You're concentrated on the sensation of expansion, contraction with the breath, and that feeling overcomes the feeling of fear. And at the same time, empowers your autoimmune system to have a positive response to anything you need to take care of inside your body. Your hands come out to your ribs and Feel the motion with your hands. The ribs are actually pushing the hands apart with the inhalation. Back together, exhalation. Feel it. It's a very pleasant feeling. The pleasant feeling overrides negative feelings of worry, fear, doubts. A couple more times, really noticing the sensation, the expansion, contraction of the whole middle section of your chest the air flowing in and out of your lungs. So it is important in the practice of yoga to be consistent and to practice regularly. All day long we tend to forget the breathing our carbon dioxide level builds up because the cells are making carbon dioxide all the time and we need to get that out and bring the breath back in so any time of day when you feel and notice that you're not breathing just pause take a few breaths like this your stress level will go down you'll feel better your physiological body has more oxygen to do all of the processes in the body and oxygen is a requirement of every cell in your body, every gland and organ. So let's do a couple of simple motions while we're here. In the position that you're sitting, take a full breath with everything you can. And when we exhale, we'll do a side twist. This is kind of twisting your body, compressing the lungs, helping to squeeze everything out. We come back to the forward position, breathe in as deeply as you can, and we twist over to the other side. Back and forth a few more times, with a lot of attention going to how well you are breathing. Very deep in this front position, Exhaling, squeezing out to the side. Feel. 
concentration on feeling the motion. You don't need to think anything to observe these feelings. You simply stay focused on the sensation. You are creating and producing sensation by the breath and the motion, and your attention stays with it. We, in, through our Western education, have the habit of flying away, consciousness and attention goes into thinking, and we don't feel anymore. So in yoga, bring back center of feeling yourself. Let's just go into the upper part of the breath. Again, the most important thing for what humanity is going through now is learning how to breathe correctly and properly take charge of your breath, be empowered with it, and no virus is going to be able to take it away. So upper section is the rising and falling of the whole chest. As you're doing one section of the breath at a time, you don't pay attention to the other, you're simply focusing on getting this rising and falling. And we can exaggerate this one by lifting the shoulders up a little bit and then relaxing them back down. This helps to take the weight off and make more space in the upper section of your lungs. It also helps to relieve the sense of worry and responsibility and stress that comes from that by lifting and dropping the shoulders. Upper breath. Now let's add a new movement to this, to help with this process. Again, it discharges stress and tension. Because of our normal working lifestyle, maybe we're not working now, but we have the habit of having, sitting at a desk or something, and this whole area gets uptight, stressed because of sitting too long. So moving around, getting things to flow while breathing, just discharges the stress very quickly. And stress is a known factor in debilitating the autoimmune system. So we need to drop the stress, relax, and we can do that simply by breathing deep. So we're gonna take our arms and bring them up, inhaling and exhaling, coming back down. Feel your shoulders are lifting with this motion. Keep your attention on the sensations of what we're doing. You don't need to analyze or think much. Just have the experience of breath flowing in and out, chest rising and falling. Okay, I'm going to go sideways so you can see I'm adding another little motion to this with the arms rising and falling. I'm going to do a little bending, moving my chest forward as the arms come up. This is the in breath, on the out breath, the arms come down, and I'm bending and even slouching a little bit. The slouching is restricting and compressing the chest, helping to squeeze the air out. So obviously we do this on the exhalation. The inhalation, we're going into a bit of a back bend, arms are way up there.
These are really simple exercises that pretty much anyone can do, including many old folks. You can be doing this, like I were sitting in the classic thunderbolt, Vajra Asana, can be done sitting in a chair. At any age you can be doing this and it's amazingly beneficial. How's our time, Joanna? Four minutes. Okay. We're going to extend this into a posture called Viagra or Tiger Pose. Done motion to breath and synchronizing the inflow, outflow of the breath with the motion of the body is the important aspect here. I'll do it to the side so you can see how much movement. Dropping the belly down, my pelvis is tilting so the tailbone is coming up and my head is coming up. So my whole back and spine is in a curve this way. This is the inhalation. This is where your lungs have maximum capacity. On the exhalation, bending up, arching the back way up, dropping the tailbone down and the head down. Inhalation, exhalation. Again, reset your focus on the sensations and feelings of the body, the motion, the flow of the breath. Don't let your mind jump in and take off into thinking something. Stay present. So we're not going into part A, part B, or part C of the breath. We're just going through the motion and breathing as deeply as we can in and out. The movement of the body is going to be pushing the air into all of the lungs and squeezing it out of everything. Now from here, to whatever extent you can, we're going to go into a seated position, just leaning back, but keep your hands out to the front. And bring your hands up a little bit onto the fingers. So when we go down here, we're sort of pulling the arms up and away, and this is opening up the upper section of the chest for the breath. Then we're going to Inhale, coming up to here, and carry on into a cobra-like position with the exhalation. In-breath is at the all fours position. Exhale, going back down, leaning back as far as you can. If you don't get to sit on your heels, don't worry about it, that's not the point. In-breath and out breath. Again, keep your attention on feeling all body sensations. Doing this several times, you can do it for a few minutes, you can count up to nine or a dozen. Then we're going to change it just a little bit. And a little bit is, from here we're out of breath, we come up inhaling to this point, and now we just lock in the breath. 
Now exhale all the way back to the seated back position. Inhale to here, hold it in. Exhale all the way back. Noticing the sensation. How does it feel when you're here with a held breath? It's putting a little bit more pressure into the lungs, forcing a bit more oxygen into the bloodstream. Now the next time we sink down, Again, if you're not comfortable and familiar with this, you can use a bit of a cushion or block and you're kind of sitting down on that. The important aspect here is you keep your arms stretched out there and even take your hands and walk them a little further away from each other. So you're opening up and you're using the fingers gripping the floor to pull your arms and shoulders more open away from you. Relax the head down and let's go into the upper section of the breath. Feel with each inhalation there's expansion that's going into the upper section. Exhaling, everything is collapsing back in towards the center. Expanding on the in-breath. The attention stays feeling, flow of the breath, expansion, contraction. And let us come all the way up. To a seated position that you're comfortable with and again if you're not a regular yoga practitioner and you're just doing this as a breathing technique to enable the autoimmune system and ward off any viruses again you can be sitting in a chair there's a powerful technique an important one called cleansing breath and it involves taking a nice full complete breath and then blasting it out while compressing so you're actually slouching down into this on the exhalation full in breath and it's out through the mouth in this case and the mouth is open enough and you're blasting it out quickly like this on the inhalation you're lifting back up You don't need to do a whole lot of these, but periodically, <clears throat> as you're doing movement and flow, especially for us, it's early morning or any time actually, it helps because you're moving and you're bringing up circulation, you're getting the carbon dioxide to come from anywhere in your body back to the lungs, and you have a little deposit of too much CO2 in the lungs, so emptying them all out completely and you're forcing it out as you slouch i'll just do it sideways again so you can see that i am slouching on the in breath full
So this particular breath, cleansing breath, has been uh, measured in laboratories in South India years ago, and they found that by just doing it three times effectively with the slouching, you eliminate all the excess CO2 in your body. So then you can go back to moving and breathing deep and oxygenating yourself. But periodically you stop and do three of these. You don't need to do more than three if you're doing them well. Now back to complete deep breathing. See if you can combine the abdominal breath, the midsection breath and the upper into one wave-like motion. It begins with the abdomen, goes to the middle and to the upper. You can, in the beginning, use your hands to feel the movement and how it goes from the bottom up. The exhalation is in the same order. You're pushing out from the bottom, squeezing the air up, and then you're squeezing the upper sections to get it completely out. What do you think, McKinley? Should we go into some more movements, a few standing poses? Yeah, we've gone to a few standing poses. There's loud noise in the background, like a teapot. Yeah, th those are the bugs here. Yeah, those are the bugs. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> Kendra. So yeah. let's come to a standing position. <laughs> like a teapot. We'll do some simple movements again, unless you want to throw in some complicated ones. Simple. Simple for today. <laughs> Simple. And uh, again, the important thing from my experience of many years is synchronize the breath to the motion. So it becomes a little bit dance-like. And in some of the forms of yoga, dance is used quite a bit. Egyptian yoga used a lot of dance, putting them all together with breath, music, and flow. So we're going to just go into a bit of a back bend. Again, I'll do it sideways so you can see different angles of it. McKinley's facing you. You can see what it looks like from that angle. You can place your hands on the back, your buttocks and upper thighs, in breath, and out breath going forward. Just to whatever extent you can. If you can't touch your toes, that's not the important thing. Notice that you're getting this torso bend, expanding the lungs, compressing the lungs. In breath, out breath. You might find as you're holding your breath on the back bend, you get some slight dizziness in doing this. Don't stay back there. We're just going into this flow. The whole body is moving here, getting circulation going everywhere. Okay, let's change the motion and come back up. Our full breath is here. Have your feet a little bit apart for stability and we go into a side bend. And we start this, just the arms hanging. Inhalation is in the center again. Exhale, down to the side. 
field. Notice that when you're going to one side, you're actually compressing the ribs on the one side, and the other side is expanding. Inhalation, exhalation. Now we bring the arms into it, so as we come up, inhaling, we also bring one arm up, and we bend over to the opposite side. Exhaling, in-breath coming up, switching the arms, exhaling to the side. Once more each side. Stop. Let's do one of those cleansing breaths. Just take a full three part breath and blast it out. Slouching forward in the standing position. One more. Now another simple movement. We're going to swing around. And the inhalation is here in the center. The exhalation is on the twist. The twist, remember I said in the previous class, it's like you're wringing out a dishcloth and squeezing things out. So in the internal organs, everything is being squeezed. When we come back to the front, the pressure is released. You have a fresh flow of both oxygen and lymphatic fluid into all the glands and organs, in between all the cells, everywhere. So we're moving and discharging carbon dioxide and squeezing everything out at the same time. You don't take the time for complete perfect breath in the middle, you just take in as much air as you can and squeeze it out. <clears throat> continuation we've done a certain amount of movement you can add a lot more to this again the important factor is the breath the breath is what activates the autoimmune system thymus gland is right here actually sitting on top of your heart affected by your heartbeat and by every breath you take so we reactivate this in many people it has gone dormant after adolescence because we've learned everything we need to know about our environment usually in childhood we've contacted all the bugs around and manufactured the antibodies we have needed but now that we're in a global situation we need to keep the thymus gland alive and functioning a little longer it's the center of education for the white blood cells that are made down in the bone marrow in various parts of the body. As a generic cell, they need to be trained and educated in accordance with the environment we live in, whatever bugs, viruses, bacteria are there. The thymus gland is the one that measures, uh, analyzes all of these at the molecular level, analyzing viruses and bacteria, and then makes a molecule that can go in and dismantle them. It's very clever, it's amazing that we have this ability, it's quite real, 
and we need to maintain this ability, take our power back and bring it back to life. Our educational system has downplayed all of this and substituted it for drugs and medicines and things, but we have our own laboratory, our own pharmacy right in here, so we need to use it at this time. So, a few more breaths. Just a bit more information about what we did with the movement and this upper section. Movement of the lymphatic fluid, an important part of our system. It goes everywhere. It has all the same kind of little tubes as veins and arteries, but it's the motion that circulates this fluid. And this is the fluid that carries lymphocytes most of the time in great quantities. So we need to activate this system. The motion, the lymph nodes up in here are the little scanning centers where the lymph is measured, analyzed, and anything in it that is out of harmony with us, not part of us, sends a trigger. And the lymph nodes will send out little neuropeptides to the brain, to the autoimmune system, to the thymus gland, saying, hey, there's something new in the system that's not biologically part of us. So we need to make some kind of antibody, macrophage, killer T cell, whatever is required to get rid of this thing. And then when our mind is in a good state, we're not in fear or stress or worry, this happens automatically. The emotions that stand in the way are the fear, the stress, the worry, and we live in a stressful society. We have learned and picked up a lot of fear from the media that's saying how many people are dying, not how many are living and getting through this easily. So we need to balance this out. Think positive, the majority of people just have mild symptoms from a variety of viruses that create the flu. The coronavirus is another one that creates flu-like symptoms. So treat it as such. Think in that way. We have an immune system that can take care of it. Let's take another few breaths. Contemplate. Contemplate our human abilities, things that have been programmed into our subconscious to take care of circulation, take care of digestion, take care of growing our body into complete human beings in the first place. This is all built right into us by an intelligence far greater than us, the intelligence of the universe, of creation, Whichever way you see that, interpret it, be mindful that this is a reality. There is an intelligent design in our human being. We did not come up with that intelligence, neither did artificial intelligence. This is biological, universal, How do you feel about that? This is contemplation. What's on your mind? Replace worry and fear with knowledge and confidence about how well designed we actually are. Take another breath in. Reinforce these positive understandings and beliefs. Coming back <clears throat> to a simple sensation of feeling in the midsection of your chest, the feeling of expansion and contraction. Expansion, contraction. 
Just focus on how good this feels. Be happy and have some gratitude for the fact that you can breathe deeply. Hopefully you're breathing some good, clean air. Or seek it out. With a great part of the world being shut down, not so functional, we have less pollution in the air, more clean, fresh oxygen available. So breathe it in, activate all of your body systems. Feel this expansion contraction. As I mentioned earlier in another class, the feeling of expansion is the essential feeling of the energy of Anahata Chakra, which is the one controlling, empowering the autoimmune system. So let's take a few minutes in silence. I will shut up. And just see if you can keep your attention feeling this expansion, contraction. If your mind cuts in and starts thinking about something, realize you have the ability to shift your attention back to the sensation of feeling. This is part of the practice in yoga, directing your attention. Feel that expansion, contraction again for one more minute. Keep your attention, let it come back to the breath as many times a day as you can, as it will come there. Every time you notice you have forgotten to breathe, take a few more breaths. And during this time of being more separated from our usual activities, contemplate the changes we need to make in our personal life as far as taking care of our health, our social life and the direction of society as far as not maintaining the health of the planet. 
Maybe we need to look at our lifestyle and look at how to slow down our industrial revolution so that we are not destroying the planet that we're living on, the one that gave us birth. Contemplate. What do we need to change? How can we make ourselves and our planet healthier? As you breathe in, breathe out. The in-breath, in English, is called inspiration. Inspiration also means getting new ideas. So as you are breathing, you may get some new ideas on how to live, on what you want to do, on what we humans could be doing better on this planet. I leave you with that passing thought. Continue breathing, inspiring yourselves, and if you can teach other people to breathe, pass this on, we could all become healthier. As we become healthier, the planet becomes healthier. Have a great rest of your day or evening, and we'll see you again in a couple of days. Bye for now. Thank you.